Way too special. Yeah, pure deliciousness. Pure deliciousness, man. My name is uh, Banky, man. Everybody calls me Banky. That's the name that I got from my grandmother when I was young. I'm coming out here after 30 years. Yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm going to have something because I'm rich in personality. You know, and uh, I'm rich in love. My family love me, and that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts. Shout out to everybody out there on the YouTube, man. Everybody been rocking with me. Everybody been holding me down lately. I appreciate you, man. It's a beautiful thing. Um, seems like y'all been enjoying these stories, so I'm gonna give y'all some more of these stories. Like I say, I got an uh, infinite amount of these because it's all, all, all you're doing is just see things and be around these same people all day, every day. So it's, it's, it's like, you just gotta recall the things that you've experienced things that you went through and just keep it in your memory which for me is kind of easy you know what i'm saying this stuff stays in my memory man so um yeah i want to tell y'all about this day about this uh this guy man his name is yadi man yadi um they used to call him back where he was from the yard man you know so yadi is uh a cat i met when i was up in the mountains Deep, I mean deep in the belly of the beast, up there in Wallace Ridge, um, where uh, racism is normal. <laughs> so it was crazy up there. But yeah, I was up there, and um, at the time that I was up there, I think it's like um, I went in 2009, and um. At the time I went up there, they had, uh, was doing this thing with these prisons where they, you know, uh, Virginia was taking in prisoners from out of state because other, other states and stuff were crowded. So Virginia was taking on the prisoners because they was getting a check for them. You know, they paid Virginia to house these inmates. And at the time, uh, Virginia had the room because they had just built all these new prisons. So Wallace Ridge was like fairly new and it was, you know, only certain criteria can go there. So if they didn't have enough to fill up the criteria there, they had extra space. So they was taking in prisoners from other uh, places. And at this time they had prisoners there. When I got there, they had prisoners there from um, the Virgin Islands. And I think it was either, it was either, it was either Utah or, or um, Wyoming. But I think it was Wyoming, I'm not sure about that, but I know it was one or the other. So, the thing is, we they, they integrate us all. We we ended up, you know, being, you know, in parts with these guys from, you know, the Virgin Islands and the guys from, uh, uh, you know, Wyoming. So, I ended up being in a block where it was a lot of the uh, Virgin Island dudes, which is cool because, like I say, uh, my step pops is, is Virgin Island. He's from the Virgin Islands, you know, and um, he's been in, in, in my life for uh, 35 plus years. So I'm kind of used to these cats and how they uh, how they talk and you know their mannerisms or whatnot, which to me is always uh, entertaining. Is I don't know what you know what I'm saying. So um, so anyway, Yard Man, Yardy, you know he was a a big and uh <laughs> for lack of other words i would say it to him because i used to tell him all the time big ugly cat man big ugly mean looking dude man probably like six five about 250 and he just had this you know this scrawl this growl on his face all the time like he was always angry always mad you know and like he was unapproachable he just looked so mean all the time he, he never looked like he was happy you know so i was the barber in the block at this time i became the barber and um i used to cut everybody hair and i had to cut everybody hair and it's probably 80 80 80 80 to 85 men so within a week you know if anybody needed a haircut i probably had to cut their hair so potentially I could cut 80, 80, 80 people's hair in a week, you know. I spaced it out and, you know, did a certain um, an amount of people today and a certain amount of people tomorrow. I used to do top tier, bottom tier, you know, and just space it out like that. 
and just you know just so I can have some order for myself the way I cut the hair. And um, so I had my own little system and everything the way I cut hair. And the Virgin Islands dudes, they didn't know me, so they used to come over and try to talk to me and everything. And I was pretty cool with, with most of them, you know. Up here in the mountains, it, it behooves you to be cool with everybody because they ain't playing up there. They shooting you if you raise your voice. They shooting, I mean, they shoot if you, if you uh, step across the line. And I mean actually shooting you. They're going to shoot you. So all of these conditions is going on while we up here. They will let the dog bite you if you get to fight. They're going to shoot you if you get to fight. So like I said, it don't behoove you to have no beef up there with nobody because you're going to get hurt one way or the other. You know, it's just, that's just automatic. You're going to get hurt. So like I said, the Virgin Island dudes, man, they used to come, man, and, you know, you know, Banky, man, I need a haircut, man. You know, you got me, bro. I'm like, yeah, I got you, I got you. You know, I get you on this day, that day, a certain time or whatever. Uh, <laughs> I never really seen all of them, you know, they together. So they used to congregate together. They used to be together. They used to be in their own little group. I think it was like maybe anywhere from 12 to 15 of them in, in my block, you know, dudes from the Virgin Islands. And um, they would all be together, eat together, laugh together, talk together because they knew each other. They came from the prison over there to over here. So you're getting to know other people. And then eventually in time, they knew other people. So they, you know, really interacted with other people. But for the most part, a lot of them would be together because they knew each other. They felt more comfortable with each other. That's normal. I never seen any of them kicking it with Yachty. You know, never. He always a loner. He always by himself. And I always heard people saying, you know, usually they put the Virgin Island dudes in the cell together. Not Yachty. He was in the cell with, you know, a Virginia inmate. And every Virginia inmate he was in the cell with ended up getting up out of the cell with him. They didn't want to be in there with him. Said he was difficult. Said he was mean. Said he was always, you know, starting stuff or whatever. So uh, he kept a single cell for the most part. Everybody went in there, they didn't stay in there long, they came up out of there. Um, I got to know him because he used to stand around watching me cut hair, and then he would all of a sudden, you know, want to pick when he wanted to have a haircut. He didn't want to have a haircut when I'm doing other people's hair. And I, on his on his block, on his side, the side that I'm doing, he'll wait till he feel like he need a haircut. So he just used to come in there and just used to stare and didn't say nothing. So one day he come down there and he was like, uh, uh, you know, I, I need, we need a haircut, man. I'm like, okay, I got you, I got you, man. I get you, um, tomorrow. I mean, we need a haircut today, man. I'm like, man, I, I'm cutting somebody hair. You know, I get you. When I get you, I told you your day is tomorrow. Um, man, just, no, don't, don't worry about it. And he, he walk away, you know. So I see him go stand over on the wall. And he's just leaning on the wall, but he's steady watching me over there cutting the hair. So, now in penitentiary, normally this right here is the beginning of a potential problem. You know what I'm saying? I'm not comfortable with people saying things to me like that and then just walking away like it's cool because you don't know what's going to come behind it. You don't know if he got a real attitude, he got a beef, or what. So, I cut hair and I just keep on cutting, but I'm watching him and I'm watching him and he watching me, you know. And um, I don't say anything to him. He don't say nothing to me. But like I say, this is these are little things that you learn in prison. And you know who's who and what they are. Normally a dude is just talking and he not going to really do nothing. You can really feel that out after you've been in prison a while. Especially me. And after I've been in prison as long as I have and encountered so many incidents and so many different situations. Yeah, so I keep my eye on him and he keep his eye on me. You know, so now we watching each other. So it's crazy, you know. But in my mind, I got a lot of things going on. Like, man, what's up with this dude? You know, so some of the Virgin Island dudes started coming up to me and talking to me, telling me about him, man. They like, man, listen. This man, Yari, man, you talk to, man. The man crazy, man. The man crazy. You know, he crazy back over our way. He crazy. We know him, you know. You know, he, he like crazy. And that's why no one talks to him. You know, so I'm like, what you mean crazy? Like what? You know what I'm saying? Man, they say this dude is notorious on the street and in the prisons over there. They say, man, they've been scared of him, man, since, since 
he was a little youngin, man. They say he didn't supposedly, you know, killed a lot of people over there. He ain't never getting out of prison. He's uh, did things to dudes in prison. You know, they say he just uh, like a psychopath, man. They say when he go off, he just goes off, right? So this raises my antennas even more because I'm like, oh, okay. So I'm dealing with a real life crazy cat here, you know? So I keep, you know, like I say, in tune, keep my eye on him. And we walking by each other for a day or two. He looking at me, I'm looking at him. But this is when I knew he was a real, real serious and dangerous dude because like I say, I'm getting ready to approach him, but before I could, he approached me and he says something that I was going to say to the to the same effect. Um, he was like, man, you don't have to watch me, man. Me, me, me not your enemy, you know? And I was getting ready to ask him, I mean, why you keep looking at me, man? Do we got a problem or whatever, whatever? But he's saying the same thing. He's like, me not your enemy, man. You watch me. I said, I tell him, I ain't watching you. You watching me. He said, no, man, you watching me, me, me see you watching me all day, man, me, 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 me not your enemy. I said, you wouldn't know that I was watching you if you weren't watching me, you know. So he said, oh, okay, 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 man, you know, it, it, apples and oranges, apples and oranges. You know, I said, okay, ah, right, you right, you right. So I leave him alone, he leave me alone. Um, the next day, is 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 goes on the next couple of days. So when it comes time for his haircut thing again, I ask him, you know, you want to get your hair cut today because today is the day you're supposed to get your hair cut. This is your time to get it, right? Uh, no, me don't want a haircut, man. You know, you, you, you only cut your your, 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 your your buddy's hair. You know, you cut your buddy's hair. You cut who you want. You know, you don't, you, me, don't, me don't need no haircut now, you know. So I'm like, okay, all right, bro. You don't want no haircut now. Don't come back later. Don't ask for no haircut. I said, I cut everybody's hair here, not just my buddy's, you know, because he was trying to imply I only cut my buddy's hair. You know, but I'm obligated to cut everybody hair in there. You know what I'm saying? No matter who it is. So he was like, yeah, yeah, you know, me don't, me don't need no hair cut, man, you know. So I'm like, all right, I go ahead and start cutting hair, whatever, whatever. He ended up coming up to me later on and wanted to talk to me. So he asked me like, uh, uh, man, man, uh, oh, 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 when, when we get my hair cut, man? I said, man, you just told me. That you didn't need a haircut, you ain't want no haircut. You said I only cut my buddy's hair. He said, okay, uh, if you, me, me don't get no haircut. You know, he had this thing where he used to always like, like a little, you know, brush you off type stuff. Like, oh, uh, you know, like he just ex ex exhausted with whatever you saying, which used to always really make me laugh. Later on, as I got to know him better, that used to make me laugh every time you say something. Then he had this one saying, um, did I tell you about later on in the story, man? But anyway, man, we just started talking and everything, and I just straight up asked him, man. I said, look at you, man. Um, all the people that came up here with you, man, from up your way, man, they don't even talk to you. They don't even deal with you, man. I said, what's going on with that, man? What type of, you know, situation you in where your own people don't deal with you? Man, me don't deal with them. Them not deal with me. Me don't deal with them. They don't talk to me because me don't talk to them. You know, them, them, them nobodies, you know. I said, them your people, man. They, them not my peoples. Them, them my own peoples, you know. Them not my peoples, you know. So I'm like, oh, okay, man. I said, man. He said, I said, listen, man. People tell me, man, you look crazy, man, over there. You got me. We, we all in jail. We all in jail, you know. If me crazy, they crazy, you know. Me, we all in jail, you know. They don't talk about me. They don't tell me what they say. You know, he get mad because he... Feel like they talking about him, right? So he's getting agitated already. I can see him getting agitated, but he's like, man, don't listen to them. You know, you know, you, you, you me want to know about me? Me ask me. You know, he's telling me to ask him about him. So I said, man, well, what's going on? He said, me, me don't no ask you what you do. What you do? You been here? You know, you been here a long time. You know, what you do? You know, I said, I ain't, I ain't do what they said you did. You know. So he said, what they say? What them say about me? You know, I said, man, the people say you crazy over there, man. You well known over there. You just been doing crazy stuff since you was young, you know. So we just get to kicking it and talking. He started laughing about the situation, right? And then he started telling me some of the things that, you know, he was doing. So he said when he was coming up, man, you know, uh, people were always over there, man. It was a lot of robbing and, and you know, stealing and, and stuff like that. So he said he got into it when he was young. And he said, man, um... It just was ultra dangerous over there. So whoever would survive over there would be the most dangerous. So he said that's what he was doing. You know, did what he had to do on the street to get what he wanted to get. 
and it ended him up where he ended up, you know, in prison, right? And he said when he got in there, he already had a reputation, everybody knew him, so he had to do the same thing. So he just had to be crazy like that. So that's why he was walking around the penitentiary now, all the way in a whole nother state, you know, and the people that came over here with him don't even want to deal with him, you know what I'm saying? He ain't got no friends, and he ain't really want none. So, me and him got to talking, man, and uh, he just, I liked the dude, you know what I'm saying? I, I kind of liked him, man, you know? So I started kicking it with him all the time. I liked his accent, like I said, it reminded me of my pops, you know? And um, I used to just kick it with him, man. He used to tell me about things over there in the Virgin Islands, which I thought was some wild, wild stories, man. And uh, I remember when he told me, man, when he started getting to uh, doing the things he was doing, getting more and more crazy out there in the streets, he said he, say he ran into some girls that he went to school with and he wanted to go talk to him and he was walking down the street and he called for him when they looked up and seen him say the girl that was with the one that he was trying to holler at said no don't talk to him man them, them boy crazy them boy kill people man come on girl let's go let's go and try to pull the girl away from him say people ain't even want to talk to him because they thought he was crazy right you know because he had already had a reputation that fast you know you know always you know, by the time he was in high school, everybody knew who he was on the street. He wasn't even going to school anymore, but people already knew who he was out on the streets in the Virgin Islands. So he said the girl was scared to talk to him, say so he killed people, don't talk to him. You know, so I thought that was crazy. He was like, man, I'm looking at her like, you know, what, 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 me, me, me went to school with you, me no kill you. You know, me, me no do nothing like that. But he said, man, that's just how people perceived him after he got his reputation and whatnot. So I just thought that was crazy, man. And the way he used to tell me stuff over there, he used to tell me crazy stories about their culture and what they do over there. He said, this is a true story, man. This, if somebody from the Virgin Islands, they may know that I'm not telling no lie about this. But he told me that the white girls over there, uh, they, they when they growing up, said their parents and stuff tell them if they uh, mess with a black dude or have sex with a black dude, they'll grow a tail like a donkey. So I say, what? He say, yeah, man, they tell him, girl, that they tell him that young, man, you know, they, they, them no mess with black men, man, they scared, man, they grow a tail, man. I said, man, are you serious? He said, yeah, you know, and he was like, if you put that in their head when they're young, they believe it, you know what I'm saying? Even when they get grown, they believe it. But he said, that's what they used to tell him to keep them away from them over there, man. So I just thought that was crazy too, man. But he just was a, he was a friendly dude when you got to know him, but I could see his persona and I could see why people perceived him as touch off like they didn't want to be around him because he could be abrasive. When he get mad and he had an opinion, he always, you know, voiced his opinion. He ain't gonna never agree with everything you say or nothing you say, mostly everything. He got his own philosophy. He wanted to say what he said and, and he had this one statement that I tell you I used to say all the time that I use today sometimes when I be saying stuff to people because I think it's funny but it was what he said. Whenever we get to arguing or we get to debate some sports, uh, a difference of opinion or everything, you could never get him to change his mind. Never, he always stayed fast on what he, even if you showed him the facts, he still believed it. And, 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 and what was so ironic, this was his statement. Uh, uh, me supposed to believe you? No, no, me, you, you change my mind? Convince me, convince me, change my mind. You, you're going to change my mind talking, you're going to convince me. No, no, no change my mind. You know, And that was so funny to me, he's always saying, convince me. You know, like I can change your mind, convince me. But nah, you couldn't, you couldn't convince him of anything. And that's what was so ironic, he's saying convince him, but he knew that he was not going to let you convince him because once he locked in on something, that's that, you know. But like I say, he, he, was, a, he was a controversial dude because of his attitude and his size and his persona, the way he looked at you, the way he talked, the way he gritted all the time and carried himself. But like I say, me and him got along. Um, this during the time in era too, man, where we up here in these mountains, man, with these racist people up here, the officers is racist, they'll shoot you at the drop of a dime. We up here with all these young gang members, they will jump you and you know, and they ain't worrying about getting shot. You know, because they, they going on the code, they going on the, what their uh, 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 superior tell them to do or whatever. So if they want you off the block, man, they might tell them to go get you. Them dudes got to go get you. It don't matter if they going to get shot or not. They got to do what the, what the orders are to told them to do. So they didn't like y'all, man, because 
they don't like people that they don't want to be around them. They fear that they might have confrontation with down the line. So I know they didn't like him, but they didn't know how to deal with him because they heard about how dangerous he was. And then when you're looking at him, he's a big physical dude as well. So I remember, man, one time they got some new uh, gang members in the block, man. Some 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 uh, blood dudes came in. And one of the dudes came in was real tall and, and, and muscular-like. Um, I think his name was Hot Rod. And um, he was about 6'4 and muscular and everything. And they put him in the cell with Yachty because Yachty's cell was open. Um, I knew from the beginning that was going to be a conflict right there, you know. And um, he goes in there and um, Yachty, man, ain't going to change for nothing. He's going to be him no matter what. That's who he's going to be, no matter who in there or whatever. He's not going to be intimidated. He's not going to be scared of nothing. So, Sure enough, they put him in there, and then the blood dudes is explaining to him that you're going in there with this dude, don't nobody want to be in there with, da 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 da. And I guess they had told him, but well, we want to get rid of him anyway, we want to get him off the block. So the dude, he volunteered, like, oh, he in the cell with me. I take care of it, I get him. Wait till the doors close. I whoop him. And when the doors open, I make him go check in and leave, go get out the block. So he felt confident. That's what he told his uh his, his gang members. He gonna get rid of them. He gonna beat them up when they, when they, when they locked in the cell. So uh, <laughs> y'all man get wind of it. He heard about it. So he already ready. He already prepared. And when old boy go in that cell and lock in, and they come around and they do their little count and they gone. It's all you heard was ah, boom boom ah 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 boom 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 boom. They rumbling in there. They rumbling hard. So you got all the gang members on the door, they holler, they like, get him, get him, man, yeah, F him up, beat him up, man, get rid of that, get him, yeah, all of this stuff you heard. And then you look, everybody's looking out their window, and this is the, the view that we have out our window. So if somebody come to their door, this is all you see is their face. So next thing you know, you're hearing all this rumbling and all this noise and everything, and next thing you know, you see the dude hot rod face pop up at the door with blood and everything all over his face like get me out of here get me out of here then you see his face like this he get jerked away from it man y'all man in there beating the doo-doo out of him i mean crushing him and um the police come running back in they find out where the noise at they go up there they go chase him down they get the door open and um they bum rush in there they come out and you see him they come out they bring old boy hot rod out he, they drag him out, he bleeding. They had to call medical for him, put him on the stretcher, take him out there. They bring Yad man out, he cupped up from the back and just walking and just looking around and looking at all like, Tuh, beat me, huh? Where they, where they gonna hurt me? Where they gonna hurt the Yad man? You know, it ain't no, me don't hurt me. And walk, they take him right on out, he ain't got a scratch on him. Man, they, everybody yelling and hollering like, ooh, ah, all of this crazy stuff, man. It was wild as I don't know what. I don't know what y'all man put on him in there, but he put something tough on him in there. He tore him up, man. The dude was, if you look at the physicality of the way they look, you would think that he would go in there and do what he wanted to do with y'all man because y'all man big too, but he's not muscular. But man, he, uh, nah, it ain't, <laughs> it ain't work out that way for him. It didn't work out good for him at all. And, it was crazy, man, because then when it was over, everybody talking about, man, what happened, man? What? Oh, he must have hit him with something. He must have. Nah, he just whooped him. You know, he was prepared. You know, he knew. See, because loose lips sink ships. Dude had already gone around around his mouth talking about what he going to do to him, and it get back to him. So he was already prepared. He stayed ready, so he had to get ready. When dude was in, getting ready to make a move, he was already knowing what was going to happen, and, and I guess he did what he had to do. Obviously, you know, and I ended up finding out later because ironically, he gets locked up. So he's going to segregation. He in the hole. Ironically, man, I get locked up maybe 15, 16 days later for some foolishness that maybe I'll tell y'all about one day in another story because this is about the yard, man. But I got locked up for some foolishness, man, um, inciting a riot, which was uh absolutely not true only because i didn't listen to an officer that was trying to dictate something to me but he was doing it in an unprofessional manner so i bucked on it and by me bucking that's inciting a riot and they locked me up so i get locked up anyway and i go back in the hole in segregation 
and they put me right beside Yachty. <laughs> so he's in this cell, I'm in this cell. So we got to get up on the toilet, stand up on the toilet, and then they got vents up there on the, on the um, wall. And the vent is an air duct. So if I stand up on the toilet, I can talk to him and he can talk to me. It's just like we talking clear without the walls and all of that. So yeah, man, so we started talking about a lot of things, man. I was telling him about, you know, my people from the Virgin Islands as well. He, you know, told me more stories about him in the Virgin Islands. And, you know, we got pretty cool, man. We got pretty cool. We stayed back there together side by side for probably about uh, a month, a uh, month. And he got out before I did. And, um, yeah, I liked it old yard, man, man. He was cool, man. But when I got out, man, they put me in a different block, man. And I wanted to keep in touch with him, man, and find out how he was doing. And, you know, thinking back on him now, I'm going to try to look him up, see if I can find him, you know, because uh, I like to touch base with him, man. Because I got a lot of dudes right now that I'm still in touch with that's from prison. A lot of dudes still call me and everything. I, as I told y'all, I'm going to try to start doing a segment. If I can talk to them and get them all on board, that when they call, I'll record the conversation and y'all can hear the conversation so y'all can see what it's actually like in there, what dudes are actually going through. Hear the pain in their voice, hear the concern in their voice, hear the excitement in their voice. We'll be talking to somebody that's out here, man, that was in there with them. It's just a, it's a, it's a, it's a beautiful thing, man. But um, it's also a, a eye-opening thing. So I'm going to try to introduce that to y'all. But like I said, man, the Yard Man, man, shout out to the Yard Man, man, from the Virgin Islands, man, a, a true uh, penitentiary legend. Uh, a street legend out there in the Virgin Islands, um, a no-nonsense dude, man, but all in all, he had a good heart, I know, because I got to know him on a different level, so, like I say, these are the different characters that you meet in prison, man, all kinds from all walks of life, I have an infinite amount of, of uh, information about dudes in there, man, because I spent 33 years in there, 365 days of the year, uh, day and night, man, so, it was something going on all the time. It was never, ever quiet in prison. Ever quiet in prison. It's noise and something going on at 4 in the morning, 5 in the morning, 6 in the morning, so on and so forth. So, hopefully y'all enjoyed this little story about Yard Man, man. I wanted to uh, share that with y'all, man. Different per person from a whole nother place. He was from the Virgin Islands, but he was integrated down here because he had to be because this is what the system did brought him over here and um he was able to hold his own man and to be his own man and i'm quite sure when he got out he didn't have no more problems because ain't nobody want no problems with him with his reputation and what he has already displayed over here because that's what's crazy too you you, you can have a reputation and people are still going to try you because his reputation was coming from the virgin Islands. but over here they just that's just hearsay to them it's always going to be somebody that's going to have to see it feel it, make it tangible to make it real to them. So he made it real with Hot Rod. So now they know what he'll do. They know that it's real and they don't really want that type of problems because like I say, when you get to messing around with people that ain't got no cut card and they ain't got no mercy, you're messing around with your life and you can lose your life. So I don't think they bother them anymore. I don't, I don't think he had any more problems out, out of him for the rest of the time he was there. But I ended up leaving um after I got out of the hole, I probably ended up leaving um, four to five months later, which was the, one of the greatest blessings I got besides making parole was leaving from up there in the mountains, man, because that was the worst time of my entire incarceration because it was just that much madness up there going on. But uh, thank God I made it through, and um, I was able to be out here and talk to y'all right now. But... I appreciate y'all rocking with me. I appreciate y'all rolling uh, with me on every step of the way. Um, I got some more stories coming for y'all, some more individuals. This was just something that was on my mind real fast about Yachty when I started reminiscing about these stories. So I just wanted to get this off my chest while I still had it in my head. But I got some more uh, stories about guys that I was locked up with, man, that I'm going to tell y'all in detail about. And... They, 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 they'll be coming soon. I'm going to be trying to put these videos out more often. And I'm going to start um, doing more lives as well. I think I'm going to pick a day like Saturday Night Lives. I'm going to start doing like lives on Saturday every 
every Saturday. So hopefully y'all come join me and y'all gonna get with this movement that we got, man. This positivity movement, man. This learning movement, this educational movement where we just trying to teach people, man, these things that's going on in prison so you won't want to go. You won't want to be there. And you can show these videos to your young kids, your nephews, the, the young people that you got around you in your life, in your community. Advise them to watch these videos, share these videos with them. Because if they think what they're doing out here, they're going to be able to do in prison. Or they think it's going to be something sweet in there, they're going to be sadly mistaken. But the, the, and, the, and even the biggest mistake is you're going to realize that you can't get out when you want to. You're not going to be able to get in there and be like, oh, this ain't where I want to be, and you'll be able to get out. Nah, once you're in there, you're not going to be able to get out until these people let you out, man. So be smart, man, and be safe, man, and make good decisions and try not to get up in the situations that I ended up in. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all out there, man. Y'all keep rocking with me, man. We're going to keep moving. If you ain't subscribed, please go subscribe, man. Subscribe, like this video, share this video, subscribe. Hit your post notification button so y'all can know when the next video is coming out. And I'll see y'all in a minute, man. Peace and love, man. Be smart, be safe, make good decisions. Special. Yeah, pure delicious. Pure delicious. Man. My name is uh, Banky, man. Everybody calls me Banky. That's the name that I got from my grandmother when I was young. I'm coming out here after 30 years. Yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm going to have something because I'm rich in personality. You know, and uh, I'm rich in love. My family love me. And that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts.